Welcome back, everyone, to another day of loners. We hope you all are doing well. We appreciate you guys coming back and checking in with us. Let us know in the comments how you're doing, how life is going, any new updates. Yeah. Cool. I can't Did believe it. it's like... Is it March? Yeah. It's March. This year is already moving pretty quick. Holy shit. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, this is episode Sorry. 161. Hold the intro. Alright. So today we're going to do a video. I think it's by World According to Briggs. Yeah. And then it's called Top 10 Dangerous European Cities to Visit. So now we're going to look at the dark side. The dark side of Europe. All right. And let's begin. Did you know Europe has dangerous cities just like the United States? The only difference is they speak other languages and their architecture is much better. And yes, Ireland counts too. That's not English what they're speaking there. I don't know what it is. So today we're diving into the topic of the most dangerous cities in Europe. A pretty intense subject, right? It's like stepping into a real life action movie, except this is the actual world we're talking about. They have so many good action movies come out of Europe these days, it's amazing. Anyway, these cities overflow with history and culture, but they've got a darker side too, with crime rates that might make you think twice before wandering around these cities at night. But don't worry, it's not all doom and gloom. It's about getting the full picture and understanding what these cities are all about. In this video, we're only looking at the cities that are normally this way. We won't be talking about cities in Ukraine or Russia that are at war, and they're extremely dangerous because you never yeah. know when something's gonna blow up. Just stick it in normal cities. And so there's no confusion. We aren't comparing these to US dangerous cities. We have a whole next level of dangerous here in the United States compared to European countries. These are just compared to other European cities. Got it? Get it? Good. Let's take a look. Grenoble. Number 10, Grenoble, France. Grenoble, France is like the rebellious teenager of the French Alps. It's nestled in the mountains and it's like a city that couldn't decide whether it wants to be a thriving metropolis or just spend the day skiing. The locals here have a unique talent for juggling croissants and ski poles while simultaneously discussing the latest advancements in physics. Because you know, they've got that whole cutting edge science thing going on with CERN and all. In Grenoble, they take the whole winter sports thing very seriously. Cheese too, for some reason. It's like a national pride thing. They've also got some great museums and the scenery around the city is amazing. It's what's going on in the city is the problem. The city, although attracting many visitors, has issues with pickpocketing. I mean, I've heard that from like... France in general. Yeah, exactly. Like everywhere. Yeah. yeah. Pickpocketer. I will say I haven't heard the best things about France. I think like mainly Paris and the bigger cities. But. Well, as far as pickpocketing, yeah, you, you there's signs even in Italy. They're like, watch your shit because there's people around doing it. Yeah, yeah. Snatching, especially in tourist spots and subway stations. Now, this can be said for any city in Europe or maybe in the United States, but it's a little bit more here. There's also a problem with high levels of social discrimination, drug-related crimes, property damage, and vandalism. There's a lot of graffiti going on in this city. People get mugged here. It's not unusual. Grenoble has a crime index of 59.1. Now to give you an idea where that stands, if you're below, let's say 35, you're doing pretty good. If you're above 45, that's when you start in the suckage area. And there, 59.1. That's not great for a city that only has about 300,000 residents. Charleroi. Number nine, Charleroi, Belgium. Now, I'm not really good at pronouncing names I'm not associated with on a regular basis, so please forgive me in this video. Charleroi, Belgium is often referred to as the city of surprises. It's like this mystery box wrapped in waffle. It's a strange little city that has a knack for keeping people guessing. It's got a unique blend of industrial charm and quirky surprises. I don't know if it's quirky. People don't really hang out here too often. I watched several YouTube videos where people just claimed it was the ugliest city in Europe. I wouldn't go Damn. that far, but it's not that attractive. Sort of like 
Oregon, I guess, or Portland. It's the kind of place where you might stumble upon a saxophone playing stack. Oregon is beautiful. I don't know what Oregon is beautiful. Portland is kind of. Portland's just a fucking city. It's like a down. It's like a. It's the capital. I I know that, but I'm saying like there is a lot of homeless and drug problem there. there yeah, I mean everywhere. Yeah. Every main city has that. Yeah. In that's this true. country, at least. That is true. Statue so of a funny. Belgian comic book character in the middle of a roundabout, or find yourself in a labyrinth of confusing street signs that seem to be on a first name basis with chaos. The weather here is unpredictable, the people are unpredictable, and there's about 415,000 of them. Chaleron is often referred to as a derelict, poor, and polluted city because God it has damn. one of the highest crime rates and one in four residents are unemployed. Now, it wasn't always the case. This city was once a very rich and powerful. It had a lot of different industries, manufacturing and different production type things. Well, that all kind of collapsed after the 1970s. And it's never fully recovered. Watch where you walk around this place. Not a lot of tourists visit here. I mean, there's really not much to see. But if you do find yourself here, don't go far from the train station. Get back on the train when it's ready to go. Damn, they have a crime 62.9. index of 62.9. I've heard this, yeah. Number eight, Naples, Italy. Naples is like an eccentric aunt you never knew you had, who serves pizza for breakfast and insists on singing opera in the middle of a traffic jam. It's a city where chaos and charm share a passionate love affair, where the streets are as narrow as the locals' patients or waiting <laughs> in line. The locals themselves are a delightful blend of passionate hand talkers and espresso connoisseurs, always ready to passionately debate which pizzeria serves the truest Neapolitan pie. If you dare navigate the streets, you'll discover hidden treasures like mysterious alleyways that lead you to jaw-dropping views of Mount Vesuvius. There is a lot to do and a lot to see in Naples, but it's also kind of dangerous. They've got a population of just under a million residents. Naples faces issues with pickpocketing, especially on public transport and other crimes late at night. Part of Naples' problems are quite obvious. Only a blind man will not notice upon arrival that it's got a ton of ugly graffiti, bad maintenance, and piles of waste are simple. When we did, we went into the train station into Naples. I did... Well, I don't know, because some of the locals were telling us to be careful there, remember? No, yeah, I've definitely sensed an energy shift, but we didn't, like, explore Naples. No, we didn't, yeah. So. They made it seem like it was, like, a scary place, but I'm sure it, it would be, like, fine. I'm sure it wouldn't be that too bad. Simply too hard to ignore. They say the mafia causes a lot of problems in Naples. I, I don't have any first-hand knowledge of that. Just be careful. <laughs> Naples has a crime index of 62.6. Belarus. Number seven, Minsk, Belarus. Minsk is like your introverted cousin at a global party of cities. With its pristine streets and perfectly manicured parks, it's as if the whole city is auditioning for a role on the world's tidiest town. But don't be fooled by its neat exterior. Beneath that well-pressed suit lies a city with a wild side that comes out at night. From secret underground clubs that could give Berlin a run oh, for their damn. money to dumpling joints that serve enough carbs to power an army. Minsk is a city that knows how to let its hair down when there's no one watching. So if you're ever in the mood for a little bit of clean fun and a hint of unexpected craziness, Minsk is your go-to destination. Now, they do have some problems. Now, the presence of organized it. crime and harassment by public agents contributes to the feeling of unsafety in Minsk. Foreign visitors need to be a little more cautious than your typical Belarusian. Is that what they're called? Belarusian? Belarusian? I don't know. But the government's stance and recent travel advisories from several countries kind of make things on edge if you're visiting. Belarus is notorious for being governed by the last dictator in Europe, they say. The government boasts an extremely low unemployment and maintaining a free healthcare system. It's like their go-to proof that, you know, a dictator is the way to go. Minsk has a population of about 2 million residents with a crime index of 59.85. Seems cool. <laughs> okay. Number six, Nantes, France. This charming city on the Loire River is a delightful blend of historical elegance and modern technology. The locals here take their wine and their cheese seriously. They've actually turned it into a competitive sport. The city is famous for their mechanical elephant, which is a testament to how weird they like to keep it here. I mean, if they were for sale, I'd 
you know, get a mechanical pachyderm before I'd ride a car anywhere. This place is known for their food, their pastries, their bakeries. Like I said, their wine, their cheese. It is a great place to visit. It's just got a few problems. Car theft, pickpocketing are a big thing here. Probably why they made a mechanical elephant. Who's going to break into that? They have some neighborhoods that are known as you know, pretty dangerous places and you should avoid if you're not from there. With all its problems, though, it's still a beautiful city. There's about 315,000 residents here. This city took a big hit. Pretty much half of it was destroyed during World War II. If you're in Europe Damn. and you work in some kind of tech, you already know about this place. This is a great place for tech startups. There's a lot of them going on here. But they still got that crime. Matter of fact, their crime index score is 60.06 going on in France, man. Catania. Number five, Catania, Italy. Ah, Catania, where the locals have a passion for two things, fiery Mount Etna and their seemingly endless supply of espresso. With streets that twist and turn so much, you'd think they were designed by a heavy drinker with ADHD. But the good news is, as you navigate these maze of streets, you'll find charming alleyways that lead to unexpected gelato shops and pizzerias. I was reading one article that some of the most insane driving goes on in this town. One guy described it as a high-speed game of bumper cars. There's a ton of graffiti <laughs> here and some really nasty-looking alleyways and streets. That's the downside. They got about 586,000 people that live here, and it's the second largest city in Sicily. The issues here, though, are corruption, organized crime, and natural disasters like volcanic activity add to the city's challenges. They get a lot of, you know, people driving by in mopeds and snatching your purse or taking things and then driving off really quick. Catania, Italy has a crime wow. index of 60.36. Looks pretty, though. It does. It looks super nice. Birmingham. Birmingham. Number four, Birmingham, England. Ah, Birmingham, the city where Balti is more than just curry, it's practically a religion. They even have an area there called the Balti Triangle. If you can navigate the roundabouts without getting dizzy, you've already earned an honorary citizenship in Birmingham. They say this city has more canals than Venice, but don't expect to find a bunch of gondoliers serenading you with opera tunes as you go through the canals, more like pigeons. Pigeon Choir might be rehearsing. Birmingham is a pretty interesting place. They have 1.1 million residents, a little bit more, and they have high rates of gang activities, drug problems, making this a pretty risky city to hang around in. It has one of the worst robbery rates among large English cities. Here's another Damn. startling thing. Infant mortality rate is almost twice the national average. And about a third of the people here live below the poverty line, or they're considered low income. In Birmingham, the crime the index on? is 61.53. That's wild. Marseille. Number three, Marseille, France. Marseille sits on the Mediterranean. It is France's oldest city, and it's its second largest city, but not a lot of people visit. It's got amazing food, it blends the charm of a Mediterranean paradise and a chaotic energy of a French soap opera. Marseille is about 1.6 million residents. It is a port city and it's got a tradition of gangsters, which with that comes a lot of gang violence and then they have pickpockets. Marseille has a crime index of 61.65. That's crazy. It looks so pretty. It does like, look so beautiful. Nice. Let's relax. Coventry. Number two, Coventry, United Kingdom. Coventry is a city in the heart of England, and it's a historic city, and it's known for its resilient spirit and ability to reinvent itself. Coventry has a fascinating past that spans centuries. The city played a pivotal role in the Industrial Revolution, becoming a hub for manufacturing and innovation. However, it's probably more famous for enduring the devastating bombing raids of World War II. This Damn. led to the rebuilding of its iconic cathedral, a symbol of peace and reconciliation. Today, Coventry is a vibrant and multicultural city boasting a thriving art and culture scene with museums, galleries, and theaters that celebrate the history and the artistic talent of this great city. It's got two universities. It's got a lot going for it. It's just got a lot of crime. In 2017, Coventry was named the most dangerous city in the United Kingdom, and research showed that the crime has only increased by over 14% since 2017. 
Now, this is a low number for the United States, but it's a pretty high number for them. <laughs> their crime rate is 34 felonies for every 1,000 people. Their crime index score Damn, is 69.45. I want to see out here. No, I know, right I was before just we get the that, number, I was thinking I want to like see what it is in LA and San Francisco and all that. Whole country. I want to know. I want a top ten of America's. Yeah. Thing. Number one, if you're enjoying what we do here, please leave a big thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't, and at the end of this video, YouTube will suggest you some videos that really helps out the channel if you watch one. So if you have time, please do. All right, on to number one. Damn, again in the UK. And number one, Bradford, United Kingdom. Bradford is a city of over 375,000 residents, and it's known for having the highest crime index in Europe. Bradford struggles with theft, harassment, and violent crimes. The city's police department doesn't fully agree with the characteristic, but acknowledges the importance of vigilance. Obviously, the crimes are going to be more prevalent in certain low-income areas, making some parts of the city pretty risky to venture into. Crimes do range from theft, harassment, to violent crimes. Bradford also gained the reputation for being the most polluted town in England. At one point, they had frequent outbreaks of cholera and typhoid, and Jeez. only about 30% of the children born to textile workers reach the age of 15. There's no way to sugarcoat this one. You should avoid Bradford. Bradford's crime index is 70.76. That's insane. That is All pretty right. crazy. Um, but considering that that's mild for out here, I really want to see the The U.S., here. yeah. 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 It, it would be good to compare that. Sometimes ignorance is bliss, though. I know. <laughs> I do want to go to Naples and other parts of Sicily. And um, that one, what was it? Belarus looked pretty cool. Minx or whatever. Relax. We're not going. Minx. Chill. Take a lap. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. All right, guys. If you enjoyed that video, make sure to like and subscribe. Appreciate y'all. Buy us a coffee if you'd like. And hopefully no one got offended by anything we said. Well, you didn't say anything bad. Yeah, I know. Or anything that guys yeah. said. I don't know. All right. Anyway. See you on the next one. Bye.